No, no picture, no video can like capture the magnitude of this man. <laughs> no, not by a long shot. All right, welcome back to the trip. We're in the van. If you watched our previous video driving out to Colorado with the entire crew, um, we had quite a bit of uh, fun mishaps, engine trouble, transmission trouble, um, but we have officially gotten to Jimmy's. You might remember Jimmy from last year. This is the same location where we built out the trailer uh, last winter. So you might remember Jimmy, uh, the house, the shop. But since the bus is kind of out of commission, we're using this as a bit of a home base and we're taking Christina's van out on all the adventures. So we're gonna be heading out on a hike up to the flat top region in Colorado. And we're gonna take you along, have some fun. Well, we finally made it uh, all the way to the trailhead. We are currently in the flat top area. Like I was saying, uh, we're gonna be doing a hike called Devil's Causeway. It's about a six mile hike. It goes up about uh, to 11,800 feet. Um, and it's gonna be up to the top of kind of what you see in the background right there. Hey Justin, Good how lake. was uh, your first experience of driving washboard National Forest Road? It's real bumpy. I felt like I was killing the car, man. To give you a little background of what's been happening the last few days, Ivan did not have a great time coming out west. What ended up happening was we found a pinhole in one of the transmission lines going to the cooler. It was causing the transmission to overheat. Uh, it burned up some of the transmission oil and we ended up losing a solenoid, which disallowed us from going from third to fourth gear. So we're having some transmission issues. It's not the biggest deal. Uh, we parked it back at Jimmy, so it's in a safe location. And as I said, we're using the van to kind of get around. Justin came on out here, Christina came out here, Rachel came out here to just have a good time, enjoy Colorado. Fortunately, the bus is gonna have to sit and get fixed, but luckily we do have some other vehicles to get around. We're only about a half mile in. We are all definitely a bunch of flatlanders and uh, we're at about 10,000 feet. We're gonna be going up to 11.8. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna take our time. But this right here is the beginning of the loop. We're gonna be heading up this way. You can't see where we're gonna be headed, the flat top up around. We'll hike the entire ridge and then eventually be coming down this side. So I did this hike with Jimmy about two years ago. So I wanted to share it with my sister, Justin. And then if you don't know, Faye, uh, if you know Luke, who's been helping out in the bus build, Ivan build, Faye is Luke's girlfriend and she came along on the hike with us. But one thing I do wanna say is from here on out. I'm actually going to be using some footage uh, from two years ago because currently right now uh, we can't fly a drone because we're in a stage one fire ban. So to give the you know firefighters and everything the ability to not have to worry about drones flying around and the fact that we're in an area that you're not supposed to fly them, uh, we're going to be using footage from two years ago when we were allowed to film. Uh, so you're going to see that laid over in there. So if it does look a little different, it's just to give you some perspective, but we're going to be getting on this hike and uh, I think we're ready to go. Let's go. Not that much farther up, but I know when we were finishing up the bus back in New York, we wanted to start a little section called Rachel's Opinions. And I think with how tired and breathless we are, it's time to get Rachel's opinion. What's my, what am I, what am I, oh. I don't know, Rachel, what's your opinion? Just about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and. It's a heavy topic, however. Colorado has definitely helped gain up those happiness points. It is gorgeous. Like the meadows, the Rockies, ah, oh, breathtaking. Literally takes my breath away. Is it Colorado or the altitude? A little bit of both, a little bit of both. Honestly, a beautiful place, and I'm very happy to be here. Did not expect this much beauty. When everyone's like, Colorado's great, I'm like, sure, sure. But no, like, Colorado's great. If it's on your bucket list, definitely, definitely start making moves because this is a cool place. That's been uh, Opinions with Rachel. We're gonna keep heading up the trail. What are you thinking, Justin? The word tragic comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, well, we still have to go up that. We're gonna sit here for about five minutes and then 
We'll see you at the top. The cart at the top that has margarita slushies. Margarita slushies at the top. They got the, the regular flavor, the raspberry, strawberry, mango, you name it. That's what they got at the top. He's dreaming. up to kind of the first plateau we still got to get to the top of the flat top up there but this is a great spot to stop overlook uh, out to the west Rach, yes. how are you feeling good i'm excited to finish i mean it's only been an hour and a half and we've gone two miles just remember you could be your own emt now exactly oh and Faye's an emt too yay oh wait we got three justin's a firefighter in emt i'm pretty much they're all gonna save me thanks guys <laughs> Justin! We made it to the top. Yes. Rachel accomplished one of her goals. Yes. And now that we're out of breath, and we're gonna take about five minutes to catch it, I'm gonna send you back over to Jimmy's and uh, show you a little bit about what's going on with Ivan, what's going on with the transmission and how we're gonna fix it. And then when we catch our breath, we'll continue on the hike. Sound See you good? soon. Yeah, sounds good to me too. <sighs> Well, we're back here at Jimmy's and over the last few days while we've been hiking, adventuring, I've been doing a little bit of diagnostics on Ivan just to kind of find out exactly what's wrong with it. So what we found was right here, which you can't perfectly see through the grill, is the cooler for the transmission line. And the line that goes to the cooler was actually leaking. It had little pinholes in it. So it was slowly dripping transmission fluid and that's where the transmission fluid was actually going. So when we stopped on the side of the road in Kansas in the last video, uh, we didn't know where the transmission fluid went at that point. We just knew that there was none in there and we finally determined where that actually is. So to get here up to Jimmy's, this is what we did. You can kind of see in there, we created a compression clamp using some uh, ties, some metal that we had inside the bus and some foil, and not foil, um, HVAC aluminum tape. And it is not a perfect fix. It is not a fix that's gonna last very long, but it did get us 20 miles down the road and held the pressure, which is all I really needed. The parts already came in. So here's the new transmission line right here. And then what also happened was we were running codes. So we've been reading codes with one of these code readers. You can pick these up at AutoZones, O'Reilly's, Napa's. Um, I put a link in the description for this one uh, that I currently have from Amazon. If you're living in a bus, living in a van, just traveling in a vehicle, buy one of these. It's They do cost you know 30 to over $100, depending on which one you get. But they're super important because what this thing did was I plugged it into my sensor right here. It gave me a code. And that code I was able to look up online and it at least told me what was going on. And I knew kind of what to do when I called the mechanic and said, hey, this is what's going on. Um, this is the code that's coming up and I can get some suggestions, some ideas, uh, and at least I can get started on diagnosing what's actually going on. What this thing has been telling me is that one of the solenoids in the transmission has shut off. So I had to order a solenoid and we're gonna have to get into that whole thing into the transmission. But without this thing, I would have never known. So I don't have the solenoid yet, uh, but we do have to take the transmission pan out. So I got a new gasket, a transmission filter, and what this is gonna allow me to do is put a new filter in because we're already gonna take the bottom of the pan off the transmission, uh, a new gasket, get it all sealed up correctly, and it should be a fairly quick fix. You know, solenoid, gasket, filter, transmission line, and we should be good to go right there. Um, all the parts in total were just about, um, I have to look at the receipt, but it was just over $200 for all these parts to get it fixed. I am going to be putting it in the shop and I don't know exactly how much that's going to cost at this current point, but because we're going to be traveling on this trip and Justin and Rachel only have so many days to travel around Colorado, I don't want to spend three or four days of me doing this job and wasting their vacation. Uh, so we're going to put it in the shop. We're going to continue traveling on with the van and the slacker bus, and then I'll swing back around to Jimmy's and pick back up the bus when it's done. Uh, uh, and I think that's just the best choice to make sure that, you know, we're not just sitting around waiting. But that's a part of the reality of the road is, you know, sometimes you have breakdowns, sometimes it changes plans. In this case, since we have two other rigs, we can play and make some adjustments. And now that we know what's wrong, we know how to get it fixed. And it's been about two minutes. I should have caught my breath at the mountain by now. If I haven't, we've got bigger issues. We'll get this fixed. See you back on the mountain. 
We're definitely having some issues with the bus. It's okay though, it's kind of like the shakedown cruise. So it's all good in terms of just getting it fixed. It's really about the people you're with. Positive attitudes, uh, you know, just sticking with it. I can't appreciate everyone enough for just having a good attitude about what's been going on with the bus and stuff. We'll get it fixed and uh, thanks to Jimmy for letting us, you know, hang out at his place and use it as kind of a safe place to get the bus fixed before we can head back out and go boondocking. But we're not gonna let it uh, ruin our trip. You know, we just get it fixed, keep moving forward. We're in Colorado, we can't really complain. Next up on the list is gonna be uh, what's actually the Devil's Causeway and what this hike's actually named after, which is right there. I don't know how wide it is, but it's a really skinny part to this top ridge that you have to cross to get to the other side of the flat top. We've got a pretty cool drone shot from a couple years ago of this, so you can see it from a different angle. Hopefully it's not too windy and we make it through all good. How are you feeling, Rage? I feel great now. I made it to the top. It's gorgeous. Now we get to go across a really cool kind of sketchy path, which I'm super hyped about. And then it's literally all downhill from there. Justin, no! Justin and I were talking before about how we have had breakdowns, we've had successes. I mean, just the ups and downs. And Justin is, I think he's really getting the the real bus life experience. You know, this is this is a vacation in a way. Uh, you know, Justin took off at work and I'm bringing the girls out here for the first time. Uh, so it is, you know, a lot of fun. It's also like an opportunity for me to show Justin kind of what my life's been like been like for the last four years. Justin was actually helping me on Navi when I first bought it, but it's just such a fun time to just be up here in this high altitude meadow, uh, hanging out with Justin after five years of trying to plan a trip with him. And not only do we get to go kind of go on vacation together, um, but I also get to just show him my lifestyle and kind of what I've been doing. So having him around has just been a really uh, great joy for me just to be able to show him a lot of the places that I've been to over the last few years. All I can say is uh, if you guys are interested in getting out there, Justin fought to get into the fire company for five years. Um, he finally got the job he's been working for. He finally got his time off and he's now gone on the trip with me. So, you know, it took him five years and you just got to set your goals and go after them. And now we get to enjoy this view and try to catch up to Rachel and Faye. They're running away from us. We just found this massive pile of snow from the winter. We're just talking about how crazy it is, how it's July right now. A pile of snow is still here from the winter and Justin's just giggling at the fact that there's even snow in July. It might actually snow tonight, who knows? You know, you never know. How are you guys doing on the hike? We're almost there, we got three miles left. I'm doing good. Or actually, how much do we have, Rachel? You're, you're, you're well, tracking it. We have, we've gone 5.3 miles. I thought it was only six miles. I feel like now we're finding out it's probably more like eight. Because I'm pretty sure it's six from the top to the bottom if you go the same direction because it was two and a half up and then about two and a half back I could see where people get five to six miles. Oh, so the loop, the whole loop is I eight. think I think the whole loop is actually ten. Rachel, don't awesome. say that. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Gotta to love it when you me. start a hike, plan for six, and then you end up doing ten. Just gotta love it. <laughs> well, when we get around this ridge, I'll uh, point out where we have to go and you'll see how far of a distance it still is. So you can't see it. But we gotta go right there to the base of that hill. hill. The mountain. That's what we're calling it. That's a mountain. Yeah, the hill, right, or whatever. We gotta go right there. I'm gonna make a pretty good bet here that... I'm, I'm gonna say it too because I read it online, so I'm yeah. fairly confident yeah. that it's about 8 to 10 miles. Well, at least we got enough water. Devil's Causeway is, whoop, can't see my hand, back up over there. We hiked the entire ridge 
uh, up top and are coming down. We just found this really awesome meadow and Rachel's talking here and I think she's got some opinions. You can't, the camera isn't even gonna do it justice. This isn't, this wait, 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 is. Hold up. Like it looks nice on the camera. It's not, it, I don't even have words. I, this is like my favorite thing I've ever done. It's so beautiful, I can't even fathom. I think I've said that like seven times, but I, I'm gonna continue to say it. It's amazing. Nothing like I've ever seen before. And I've been all around the world and this is the most unique place I've ever been. Well, and this has been another segment with Opinions with Rachel. <laughs> They're just, oh my gosh, Rachel, look at this lake. My ducks would love that. My I ducks. would love that. I'd put a little tent right in that clearing. Wait, they don't even know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. The clearing with the little yellow flowers. Tent there. Kayak. Ducks. Done. Life made. Mm -hmm. I stand by it. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. This is what makes the trip, guys. <laughs> The people you're with, I'm telling you. Trail update, we, Rachel just said we are at about six miles. So it looks like this is definitely gonna be that eight mile. We're not really complaining because I mean, oh no, we accidentally hiked extra and got to see all of this. We are so upset, right Rachel? I'm, I'm miserable. Life will never be the same. No, I'm not even upset at all. After how many miles, check your watch? We did 8.2 miles in five hours and seven minutes. 8.2 miles, five hours and seven minutes, and we are officially back at the trailhead. I think we're all tired. What did you say? I'm tired. Yeah, I think so. But it so. was so good. It was so good. Any opinions from Faye? My feet kind of hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see the van, I think, right up there. I think Christine is probably just waiting for us. <laughs> You went on a hike too? Yeah. Yeah, well we just finished, it ended up being eight miles. Yeah. Not six. I know, cause I was like three, I was like rushed back here to get here at 3.30. I'm like, hmm. I'm like, okay, like Michael said maybe four o'clock and then I'm like, it's almost six o'clock. Should I be concerned yet? What we did was we hiked to from that ridge along the entire top to where you yeah. can't even see the ridge and then back down to the valley. So it is this far. I guess it's pretty much, you know, as much as we love Ivan and the bus life, Gotta thank Christina for letting us use her van and uh, you know, yeah. letting us live a little bit of the van life here. But man, that hike kicked my butt. Ha! Huh. It was so good, it was so good. I mean, just to finally get Ivan out to Colorado, regardless of how we got here. And my van. And your van, and, and, Dale's, and Dale's bus. bus. I mean, can't ask it for a better time. It was a good time. first trip for Ivan. Oh yeah. And me. Oh yeah. Oh, and it's not over. No. We still got days to go. But, all right, we're gonna head back to Jimmy's and uh, go say hi to Luke and all them. Back to Jimmy's. Van is safe. Let's go see Ivan. I want to go see Ivan. There you are, buddy. I didn't leave you for too long. You'll be okay. We'll fix you soon. It's all right. We're back at the bus. Back where we're supposed to be. Uh, once again, thank you to Christina for letting us use her van, driving us around, and uh, you know, getting us over to that hike. I hope you enjoyed the hike. I hope you got updated on kind of what's going on with Ivan and what we're going to be doing over the next bit. But with that said, uh, I'll see you in the next one. And thanks for watching.